the sunrise near Delft in Holland, homeland of Johannes Vermeer. He's one of the great painters of light, but until recently, he himself has been obscured, lost in the darkness of the past. I've come here to try to tell his story, to shed light on a life that's remained secret for more than 300 years. It's a tale of love and death, about a man who dreamed of a perfect world, but who ended up drowning. It's a story about a real flood, the flood of 1672, the year of disaster, the Dutch called it, when the dikes were broken and the country was inundated. But it's also a story about rising tides of debt, about the market forces that can swamp and destroy a life. 17th century Holland was a balancing act. It was a nation poised between land and sea, between debit and credit. And at the centre of it all, there was the windmill. There were thousands of these machines all over the landscape, busily pumping water from one level to another, making Dutch life and Dutch prosperity possible. But what's all this got to do with the secret life of one of Holland's greatest painters? Well, I think Vermeer's life was a balancing act too. A constant struggle to keep flood water at bay, which in the end seems to have gone horribly wrong. Vermeer painted stillness, but he died, they say, in a frenzy, a fit of madness at the age of just 43. I wanted to find out why. Madness is the last thing associated with Vermeer's work, but I was interested in the passions that ran beneath the calm waters of his art. So I went to Delft, the city he lived and worked in all his life, in the hope of building a psychological profile of the artist. In recent years, a mass of new evidence has been unearthed.